talking about Rinna and the bots and Hilton and the meltdown and Aspen. We always get over it, of course. <laughs> Excuse me. But I mean, I'm not that excited. This should have been, you should have taken the ball and you should have run with this. This would have been great, Meredith. Heather Gay, this would have been great. If you had reality volunteers on your account, on your show, this would have been great. It would have been great. It would have elevated the show and it would have been such great stuff to work with. I think the cast made a mistake. If you truly wanted her gone and you weren't just saying that and you talked to Andy and you were so broken, I mean, there is nobody that I, like, again, Teresa, I've been at New Jersey Filmings. She is getting 1.5 million. She shows up. She turns that part of her brain off. She's like a robot. She films. Don't upset her. She'll flip a table. She'll smash the glass. She's great. She does the job great. And then when it's over, she goes home. Luann, you never see Luann getting in the mud on social media. Yeah, she sends Bethany at a show when she asks someone asks and she laughs. She doesn't have the eggs. Candy Burris, very easy to work with. Show up, give her the 2.8, let her do it. Let her go home. Kenya Moore, she doesn't get it. Like, that's like, you should have just shown up and done the job and let this girl stay because it would have helped your fucking show. Everybody is talking about Heather Gay, Whitney Rose, Meredith Marks, Baby Gorgeous. And I think some people are even talking about Angie Katz and Evis. I like it, Angie. I'm not ragging on you. I think in a way you're the most interesting one to watch next season because like we don't know what where you're going on this. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is, to be honest with you, you fumbled the ball because now the girl is gone. So I think you made a huge fucking mistake, Okay. I'm not angry. I'm just like, what a missed opportunity. Beverly Hills, I don't even want to recap it. Was it? I'm a little bored. I'm a little bored. I'm a little bored. I'm going to get back into it, okay? I'm going to get back into it. Um, And just so you know, we, we, we want the B-list players. We don't want the corporate America A-list, okay? And I don't even mean that in negative. Crystal Kong, that's why she has a job. I've said this from the beginning. Every season, Crystal, I'm like, she's not getting fired. Crystal does the job. She speaks up. She does what she has to do. Angie Katzenevis, I mean, you know, we had the drama with her husband. She, this is the world we live in. We would rather have Angie stay than Monica. Corporate, corporate America, producers, casting people. I like Angie. I like her a lot. I think she has so much potential. I think she had a great season. I think there's not, this is nothing, nothing. I am not slighting Angie at all. I think she is wonderful. But in what world do we live that we are keeping Angie and we're letting Monica go? Okay. That is housewives. This is the reality of the situation. Come on, do a B, B job, B plus, A minus, keep your job. Is Anne Marie going to keep her job? I'm not so convinced Anne Marie's being fired. I'm not. I mean, y'all hate her, but I'm not so convinced she is being fired. I'm not. We can re edit her. We can do something else. Yes, her husband has this shady past. I do think probably, I'm not making no more 100%. I'm not making no more 100% after Melissa Gorga. And I think I say 99% Monica wasn't being fired. So, guys. Why do you even listen to a word I say? But I think probably for all those reasons, the husband and she's not great and y'all hate her, esophagate, probably Emery is not coming back, but it wouldn't shock me. Stranger things have happened. <sighs> Kyle is saying that, you know, the media grossly exaggerates her relationship with Morgan Wade. That is what Kyle is now out there saying. Girl, you are putting yourself at Craig's and forgetting food inside and running in and going places where there's paparazzi and holding hands and shopping for rings. Oh, I just wanted an extra ring. Well, Morgan is standing next to you very close. So, I mean, it's implying you're shopping together with her. I know you're not. But girl, the media is not exaggerating everything. You're playing it up. You know what you're doing. You're calling the paparazzi and everything else. So I'm not buying it, Kyle Richards. And I got nothing against you either. But don't piss me off here today, okay? The biggest mistake I think podcasters make that come into the space or blog accounts is they're all on the take and they're all, well, not all on the take, but they're, they're, they're either on the take or they're afraid. They're like, I want this housewife to like me. Bullshit. You're getting a fake 
narrative. You know, like all those accusations, this this podcast is, is paid by Teresa. They're in her back pocket. Okay, guess what? I mean, not this one. Let's just say another one. But you know what? What happens when the queen, the queen of New Jersey, you anger the queen? Trust me, it doesn't take much to anger these housewives. And then when you anger the queen, you are cut off. And then your whole source of a podcast is gone. Can you imagine if I came on here and I really tried to like tiptoe around and like, well, I don't want to say this because I it gets back to Kyle because everyone listens now. Um, I'm really nervous, but this is what I think about Kyle. Could you imagine? Yes. Guess what? Marisol Patton probably has a fucking dartboard with my face on it just because I sat here while Anna Kinkoses, my friend, tore her to shreds. That is behind the Velvet Row podcast. We are not editing. We are not softening things. We are being honest because you guys deserve that. But could you imagine if this podcast, if I was like, my goal is like, if I say good things about Kyle, I live in LA part-time and I could then meet Kyle or like market myself to Kyle and Kyle can give me like a part-time job and then I can become this and then I can become a media titan. Well, it doesn't work that way. If, should have, could have, all these are all empty promises in Hollywood. So we have our own network here called Behind the Velvet Rope Network. Thank you for all the calls, iHeart. I'm turning it down. And, you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but could you imagine? Well, think of all those other podcasts that you listen to where they're just trying to kiss the ring. And, oh my God, it's Carl Radke from Summer House. I need to bow down. I bow down and like you when you're a human being and we have a great experience. Sutton Strack, real world, amazing, wonderful. Jill Zarin, wonderful. We're not bowing down. This is equal. But can you imagine if like I was only supposed to say good things about Teresa and bad things about Melissa and then I angered the queen? I'd be cut off. And then where would this podcast be? So thank God. I'm, I'm on another tangent. Thank God here. I just wake up and there's no agenda except to be honest with all of you. My loyalty is towards every single person listening to this and not anybody on Bravo. And I'm not a hater. I mean, here we are talking about it. I'm making a good living. I love my job. And I say great things about great people. I said, I love the traders. I loved Monica this season. I'm a very happy person, but we have to just call out the inconsistencies. The only other thing I want to end on is our HOC is filming. We still don't have Alexis. Do you all see Alexis is now posting pictures with John Jansen and posting, she posted Banks, Banks Jansen and said, let's meet Banks Jansen. Now Banks is John's dog. Does everyone remember that we met Banks through Shannon on the Real Housewives of Orange County? Not so long ago. So Alexis thought she was being so cute and in introducing us to Banks. Well, all of you have basically torn her to pieces. You guys are not happy with Miss Bellina. See, here's the thing. Uh, this is why I don't believe Alexis was asked to be on the Housewives and turned it down. I don't buy it. And a lot of you were like, what a thirsty post. Yeah, it reads thirsty to me too. I don't know if we're not, listen, do you want to know what I think about Alexis coming back to the OC? I'll be very honest with you. I really truly believe this. We have Anne Marie six episodes in because we had nothing in Beverly Hills. At the fifth episode, Alex Baskin and all the producers are like, this is so fucking boring. Lisa's gone. What's going on? Okay, Anne-Marie was number one on our backup list. Call her in. Let's see where it goes.